Hi, thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. My name is Gregory Marles, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about texture kits. Texture kits have a lot of different names. Some people call them trim sheets, or texture atlases, or boneyards. I prefer the term texture kit since it's a little kit for you to use to texture all sorts of different objects in your scene, but they all mean the same thing. The purpose of a texture kit is to allow the artist to quickly make objects for your scene or game quickly without having to run around and bake unique maps and texture each object by hand. This type of workflow is really good if you plan on doing mobile games or if you have a small development team. I really like using it because it allows me to work with a texture kit that I've approved or in some instances that my art director has approved. So let's get started. So here we are inside of 3ds Max, and you can see I have a bunch of different objects for the scene that I'm going to be making. This gray box over here is going to be our human scale reference. It's about the size of an average human, and it'll be really useful so we make sure that our objects are all cohesive together. We also have these three crates that I've made. We have a table and chairs. We have a chest that we'll be unwrapping together, and we also have another table that I created. And lastly, we have a little pedestal over here. Now they're all made out of only wood, and that's because I've made a wood texture kit. And all of these objects are using that one 1024 by 1024 texture kit, which I've termed the wood kit. So let's take a look at our texture kit really quick. So this is our texture kit, and as you can see, it's comprised of a variety of different types and styles of wood. We have this big kind of refined wood piece here with some molding at the top. We have these two planks, which are really useful. We also have another plank, which goes really well with our unique piece of wood down here that has some nice detailing in it. Now it's really important that you guys take a certain amount of care and consideration into developing your texture kits. For example, you want to be smart about your image resolution. You don't want one piece to be significantly smaller or significantly uh, larger than the other pieces. And that's because when you use them in conjunction with each other, the player or the viewer will be able to just go, hey, that doesn't look quite right. And that kind of breaks the immersion. You also need to have solid gutters, and gutters are the breaking points between one area of your texture kit to another. So as you can see, in between these two planks of wood, I have a, a space in between them. And that'll make it so that I can either stack these pieces of wood next to each other or this piece of wood next to each other. That'll be really good. You also have to watch out for your vert count. Now if we go back to our scene and we take a look at some of our models here, you can see that this crate has these lines that run across it, and that's because I only have two planks, so I needed to add an extra set of edges so that I could duplicate the planks in the unwrap. And I'll show you that right now. So if I actually go into the unwrap of this crate right here, I grab my plane tool, and I select this guy, you can see that this UV island is currently unwrapped to this plane right here. Additionally, this plane down here is going to be beneath it, and this plane down here is going to be on top of that one. Now these UV islands are all stacked on top of each other because that's the only place that we have uh, planks. So you have to make sure that you're using the pieces of the texture kits intelligently. Additionally, you also have to watch out for something that's called sameness syndrome. And sameness syndrome is how you can tell that all of the objects in the scene are using the same texture. Usually this is avoided by having multiple different texture kits. So you have some metal on the wood and maybe you have a dirty wood or maybe you have some cloth and you're covering up parts of it. It's really up to you how you avoid that. For right now, I'm just using this one wooden texture kit. And so I'm kind of having to think of creatively on how I'm going to avoid sameness syndrome. Now, texture kits grow as you create more and more of them, so it's a really good idea to try and figure out exactly what will need to be in your scene before you start making a bunch of kits. I personally need a metal kit now. I can't advance further in asset creation unless I have one. So let me show you some of the things I made with this kit and how I made them. So you've seen my, my crate right here, so I'm just going to collapse this down. We also have this table, and as you can see, 
um, if we reference the chair, the the sit part of the chair where you put your butt is uh, the same as the top, the tabletop here. Now that's really useful because it has we're able to use it in multiple areas. And in my scene, the player will never be able to get close enough to really be able to tell that. You can also see we are using that lighter piece of wood around the edges here, which I'm also using on the plank over here on this piece of, on this, on this crate. And the planks that I used for the, the crate are also being used as the planks that are holding this table together. Now, one of the last pieces I created were this uh, pedestal. And this pedestal is actually really interesting, I think, because I'm getting more comfortable with ways to kind of use the kit. So I think that it's one of the more interesting pieces that I've created out of, out of all of them. So the last thing I'd like to do with you guys is actually take you through the process of unwrapping this chest onto the texture kit that we've created. So I'm just going to open up my material editor by hitting M on the keyboard and I'm going to select both parts of my chest. Right now I have a lid and I have the base. So I'm going to select both of them. So I'm going to apply the wood kit texture to the object. I'm going to hit assign to selection. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my unwrap window. I'm going to close my material editor right now. I don't need it. So I'm just going to open the UV editor. And as you can see, we already have some UV islands that have been split up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this first one here, and this is the top part, which is right under the lid of the, the object. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my checker pattern, and I'm going to assign the actual material so I can see it inside of the UV editor. So I'm going to grab this guy, and I know that I want him to go onto this unique wood piece right here, so I'm just going to bring him down. And I'm going to hit F2 so I can look through my shaded selection. I'd like there to be a little bit of a lip underneath the lid, so just in case we ever open this box, it doesn't just end into this plane. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these guys right here, which correspond to the bottom part of the object, and I'm just going to drag these over, and I know I want these guys to be a part of the, of the wood planks, so I'm just going to apply them there. And I'm going to turn off my map seams just so I can double check to make sure that I'm giving myself good gutters. All right, so those are a little thin, so I'm just going to move them down a little bit. All right, and that looks good. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I need to apply the lid UV islands to the texture kit. So right now it's very big, so I'm just going to rotate it. And I'm going to scale them down. I'm just going to get those guys nice and nice and neat on there. All right. So now we could be done here, but there's something that I've noticed that I don't really like. So right here at the bottom, uh, the wood planks kind of just end in in wood planks, and it kind of doesn't make sense for that to just end in that position. So I actually want to add another loop around there, and I'm going to make another texture kit change. So I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to convert this guy to an edible poly, just to make sure I'm saving my unwrap. And then I'm going to grab my edge tools, and I'm just going to select all the edges along the bottom, and I'm going to hit connect. And I'm just going to slide them down a little bit. That looks good right there. And then I'm going to go back into my unwrap. And I'm going to open my UV editor. Let me just bring it back over here. And I'm just going to select these edges. excuse me, these, these faces. So I'm just going to select these faces. And I'm just going to right click and break. So now I can move them around independently. And I think that I, th that I would like there to be, you know what, I'd like these to be unique on the bottom too. All right. So you can see that we have a bit of a problem here. These these the the UV islands are very stretched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale these guys up, and I'm going to bring them down. Oh, that's a little bit too much. A 
All right. That looks nice. Pretty good. I might actually flip them so that the lip is at the bottom here. And then let me just make sure that I have a good... All right. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to edible poly. And now our trunk or our chest is complete and we can add it. Oh, now it's not under the table. <laughs> And now we can add it to all of our other objects that have been created with our texture kit. So that concludes our lesson. If you guys have any comments or questions about the materials covered in this lesson, please don't hesitate to post on our forums and check out our other videos. And thanks for watching 3dmotive.com.